Mm -hmm. It's the Morning Cryptos. My name is Mark Shepard and this is day 82 of my 90 day challenge to go deep, deep, deep into the Bitcoin rabbit hole, the world of cryptocurrencies, the world of transformation, of human change, of the cutting edge, the leading edge, the driving edge of technology and human evolution. <laughs> and what a show we have for you today. Start the music now. All right, the exciting show, the show. Let's look at the Bitcoin price, see what they come up with. All right, Bitcoin heading 10,000, CNBC survey says. Cautiously bullish, 6,000 in play as Bitcoin price stages sharp recovery. After dropping to 5120, Bitcoin price surges about 5650, right? Okay, so... That's the deal. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Future Bitcoin price is 25000 That's a conservative estimate. So just to keep everything in perspective, let's look at the actual thing called Bitcoin. This is a chart. And what's going on right now is a consolidation. Now, if you ignore the, the, the flash crash drop, because it was a very short, you know, whisker or wick. We are in a channel. Sideways channel. It's consolidating. It's getting ready. Right? And it may it may stay here. Right? Barring any negative news, it may be getting ready for its push to 6,000, which is not too far away. Right? So, uh, Bitcoin is not going away it really isn't at this point you know a lot of the pundits a lot of the press are talking about it as being a you know bubble and that's you know the price the market requires differences of opinion to understand that's what's beautiful about it is that there are people who think it's trash and they're free to not invest in it right or there are people that think it's going down from here and they're free to sell it, right? And the thing is, though, that millions upon millions upon people are learning about it and looking at it and being exposed to this radical idea. And those of us who actually have an imagination and who realize that we are actually living in a pretty oppressive economic situation... Those of us, we want something better. We want something better for ourselves and for our children, you know? And there's a huge shift. I was just watching a Casey Neistat video on YouTube, and he was talking about how YouTube kind of randomly demonetized some of his videos that had nothing to do with anything controversial, but their, their logarithm just kind of, you know, zapped him into a non-monetized spot. And his whole point was that all the content creators are providing YouTube with its product that it then sells advertising on. Free content creation. And so I I looked at my stats. I make a I make about ten dollars a month on my YouTube channel. And uh, you know, that's that doesn't pay my bills, and yet I put significant amounts of time into this and that's okay I I want to do this this is what I'm doing anyway and I figured I'd just videotape it and share it each day but the bottom line is how long how long do we work to make other people rich that's my point whereas Bitcoin gives you a chance and all the alt currencies gives the 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 average person who's willing to work and learn and apply and take action 
gives us a chance, gives us a chance to actually make something grow, make our money grow, make the value that we bring into the world grow. And so, no matter what Jamie Dimon says, no matter what Richard Branson says, no matter what anybody says about Bitcoin, the reality is the idea is an idea whose time has come. Uh, and it may be early for many people, but it's coming and it's not going away. The internet is not going away, right? And so people are looking at cryptos and going, okay, where can I get in early? And you see that mention is, oh, speculation. As if that's some kind of dirty fucking word, but speculation provides liquidity to the market. Uh, I traded futures commodities, and ultimately the futures markets provide a way for farmers to hedge their harvest. So you have a great corn harvest. Well, everybody else did too, so the price of corn drops. Well, if you bought, you know, if you uh, sold options against your corn crop, you would make more money based on the fact that the price went down, so you would actually hedge your crop. It was it was a tool for farmers, and that tool requires speculators. It requires traders to come in and do their best to make money in the market because they bring their money, and it makes it work. So the, the more people come into Bitcoin, the faster it's going to grow. We have an exponential point where we are... It's, they call it a tipping point. Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Tipping Point, I highly recommend you read it. There's a certain point with everything, with any ecology, with a virus, with a thought, with a new way of doing it. Like, do you remember when you didn't have a cell phone? Do you remember when you didn't have an email account? Do you remember when you were still on dial-up and your neighbors were getting cable broadband? These are changes that have rippled through our world. And that's really what's going on. And whether you believe it or, or doubt it, it still exists. It's an idea whose time has come. Whether it goes up today or not, Bitcoin will still be here next week. It will still be here. Whether it forks or hard forks, it'll still be here, right? And the lessons learned can be applied in lots of other areas. So we're early, and the, the greatest secret I've learned in my 90 days, and, I'll, and I will say this over and over again, is that you need to be consistent. You need to have some kind of a system for yourself. My system that I went back to uh, less than a week ago, I think on Sunday, I went back to the very same system that actually was doing well for me, and that is Every day, I have an automatic $20 purchase of Bitcoin on Coinbase. Now, I'm still buying other things, but I just like every single day, I need to tax myself. I need to take, I need to pay myself first, $20 a day. That's what, I often will spend $20 and I don't even know where it goes, right? So, if you just find some level for yourself that you can, uh, you can invest in Bitcoin on a daily basis or a weekly basis, just something that works for you that you do, that will automatically happen, even if you forget to do it, right? So, and the beauty of that, it's called dollar cost averaging, is that, for example, buying 20 bucks here, you know, is going to get me X amount of Bitcoin, right? And I can figure that out, but I don't really care. Right, it doesn't matter. Uh, if Bitcoin drops, my twenty bucks buys more. As it rises, my twenty bucks buys less. So it automatically protects me from chasing a rise. But if if I'm buying every day, you know, at some point, let's say I bought this day right in the middle, I would have benefited from that rise, right? Uh, if I bought some here today, over here, you know. I would have benefited from buying low, right? So it kind of, it's so simple, but it's boring, right? People want thrills, spills, action, excitement. I get that. But the thing is, Bitcoin is always exciting because you never know what's going to happen, except if you look at the long-term trend, 
something is happening. And the thing is, it's still early. That's the whole point that I've been trying to make. All right, so all that being said, let's actually look at the numbers and see what's going on, all right? So Bitcoin's going up, evidently. Uh, and it went up pretty steeply, and if you play with these bottoms a little bit, that's your line, right? It's still going up. It's going to be at 6,000. According to this... Uh, By uh, January 19th of 2018, right? If it keeps going this way. Now, it's going to come up. It's going to come back down. It's going to go up. It's going to come back down. It may, it may do a lot of volatility between here and 6,000. And that's okay. What's wrong with that? It's fine, right? So the thing is, there's a lot of uh, sentiment, judgment from the mainstream media about oh, speculators and get rich quick, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's just time to, to get in and hold right now. That's that's my, what I'm doing. And I could be totally wrong. This thing could go to, you know, could go to 2,500, could go to 1,700. Uh, who knows? It may destroy itself. But you have a ringside seat. And a transformational experience, a transformational moment in the history of the world. So, all right. So that's all I got. <laughs> and why is the chart not moving? Okay. Let's look at the 12, the blah, 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 blah. let's look at the one hour. And uh, come on, go bigger. There we go. A little bigger. <sighs> hey, stop. Jesus, <laughs> I don't know if it's my mouse or me or the charts. It's probably me. But anyway, that's the one hours. That's exciting. And look, we have this channel. Here's the bottom of the channel. Here's the top of the channel. And that's playing in the channel. It's going to come back down, I think, probably before it goes up again. But that's my opinion. All right, so let's look at Bitcoin Cash, see what they're doing. And uh, that's the one hour chart. Let's look at the one day chart to get our bearings. All right, so we had a little boost and it's gone right back down to the 319 mark. And again, I keep asking, why is Bitcoin Cash worth as much or more than Ethereum? Right? What does it really do? And here's Dash. Look at how Dash is just staying nicely in my lines. I really like Dash, it's so well behaved. Thank you, Dash. Um, yeah, and here we go. We have higher bottoms, but we also have lower tops. So this is a classic wedge. But if you look at it in a greater pattern, it's in a channel. And it's just cranking up this channel, and it has yet to cross this support line. It might today. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, and let's peek at it on the one-hour chart. Do, 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 See, this is, this is for me, a perfect little buy setup because it's, it's dipped down, it's found support, and it's starting to kind of bounce back up, but it's still low. So that's a moment when I go, okay, what do I have that's up that I can exchange for some dash, right? What do I have that's higher that I can flip into some dash? So that's, that's the question I ask myself, and I may not have an answer to that, but we'll see as we keep going through. All right, Ethereum. Ethereum, again, is like following this little line that I drew. Of course, this one I might have adjusted. I think I did adjust this one a little bit because there's only these two points. You know, um, we're on the one day, and again with Ethereum... Like, it does a lot. Ethereum's like the workhorse of the blockchain revolution. Why is it so underpriced, right? Well, they're installing Byzantium this week, and the network, kind of waiting for the network to all get up to speed on the new improvements on Ethereum. And that seems to kind of quiet the market for a little bit until people are sure that it's actually working. Right? I mean, that's my guess. I don't know, right? I'm just looking at... This chart is really a reflection 
of the energy that's in the market. And we can look down here and there's a lot of sell volume on Ethereum. Like why? You would think the improvements would make it more desirable. I don't understand it. I may have to do some research. But the last, I don't know, three weeks, I three weeks ago I did a ton of research on Ethereum and I listened to a lot of Vitalik Buterin's talks and interviews and I was deeply impressed by the fact that Ethereum is in good hands, right? Uh, it's not totally decentralized, but it's decentralized enough and it's useful, right? It's useful and I like that. But the other piece with Ethereum, I mean, if you look at it, let's just let's just go from the highest. Okay, let's just go from the highest whisker down to this highest whisker. Does that make any pattern sense? Kind of not really. What if we do one from down here? Is this going anywhere? Is this is this really a wedge? You know, what if this was a wedge? You know, what if this is just a big freaking wedge? I don't know where to draw the, just, you know, these lines don't do anything other than help to frame what's going on. Is this a bigger move than I'm anticipating? Is this actually, if this is a wedge, let's ignore the second top and it's, and the tops are moving down and the bottoms are moving up. Well, it's about to do something. Every time I see a wedge, it's about to do something. However, in this particular case, the bottoms are all higher and the reality is the truth of this is that we have a double top and you can't ignore the double top. Bottoms are higher and in this last pattern, the bottoms are higher. The bottoms are fucking higher. <laughs> like there's something going on. The bottoms are higher. Let's just, let's grab this line. Right, and this this little movement here. We have we have tops here. What about here? What do we got? We don't have really anything. We got a little bit of resistance and support, but the main resistance is up here at just before 400. And I think that's where it's going to go. It's going to move up and test this, whether it does it right away or not. I can't be sure. I, how would I know that? Right. So I think Ethereum, again, anything below 320 is, I think, a good price. Because look at all the support at that price. You know, if you can get it at 300 or below 300, great, good for you. But I, I think Ethereum is going to be trading around 1,000 at some point in the near future. So I've been stocking up. I've been getting a little more Ethereum almost every day in addition to my $20 of Bitcoin, right? So the very worst case scenario, it's a way for me to save money uh, and invest in something that interests me and it could make me rich, right? Or I could lose everything, right? It could all go to zero. Is that really possible that that many people will suddenly, we're all going down this one direction, that suddenly people will stop and turn back and go, and go back to what? Go back to paper money? Go back to 0% interest rates. Go back to buying real estate at the top of the great bubble that it's in. I don't know, people. I think cryptos are here to stay. I mean, that's just, I see it every day. And every day I come and look at it and I'm diving into this. And it's like, this whole ecosystem is not going away. It's only getting bigger, right? As more and more people come in, as more and more money come in, as more and more money comes in, this is the time, right? So over here on Litecoin, we have we have some resistance and support here. 
at the uh, 57 something or other range. And we're above that. And now is Litecoin going to be moving up or is it going to consolidate, right? Litecoin seems to do everything slowly and in smaller increments. And that could be really good for you because it gives you multiple opportunities to get in while well, the getting is good. And right now we have support at 58 in the one on the one hour charts, but we have lower tops, right? So, okay, it could, we could drop here, we could consolidate, we don't know what's going on, but something is happening. Thousands of people all over the world are buying Litecoin and selling Litecoin, right? And if you're expecting to get rich quick, this is not the place to do it. But what is quick? You know, let's see where Litecoin was. Oh, back in April. Look what it did, right? This is a huge move. And it's a huge move up. And how can you not say that that's moving up. It's moving up. It's just clear. The trend is your friend. What is in motion tends to remain in motion, right? And it takes some equal or opposite force to stop it, right? And let's say the regular mainstream economy really tanks this year. Where is it not going to tank, right? That's my question. What are the businesses, what are the industries where no matter what, you will make money, right? A friend of mine, a friend of mine has websites and he creates uh, leads. So he has an insurance website. He's got a collection agency website. Uh, and in bad times, people are looking for collection agencies, right? So he's got a bad time. He's got a he's got a, an economic downturn business, you know. So if things really go to hell, he has a business that makes money from people when the economy goes to hell. Do you know what I mean? So you want to have something that no matter what, people want, right? And so, like, I'm a storyteller, and I go to schools and do drum song story programs, right? In a bad economy, that business of mine doesn't usually do well. Right, because <laughs> arts funding gets cut first. Ah, uh, yeah. So as a musician, like music is considered a luxury. Nobody seems to. It occurs to people that musicians don't need to be paid. They just love doing what they love doing, and they're so we're so grateful you came and shared your gifts with us. Yeah, I want to be fucking paid. I got bills to pay. Right. So why am I doing this whole crypto investigation? Well, I need to learn about money and I need to figure out as best I can what to do when the economy goes into the shitter the next time. Because the last time it went down, it took me with it. Back in 2008, I had had my best year ever and I went from one week, I made like 30 grand doing my NLP and hypnosis training for a bunch of people and then... Three months later, four months later, I was homeless. Like, shit went down, right? And that, when that happens to you, and you look back at several cycles, and you see how every time the economy tanks, your dreams go up in fucking smoke, and you had no control over that, and it's just something that Wall Street did, and the government did, and the Federal Reserve Bank did, then all of a sudden you go, you know what? I don't have to be a victim anymore. Because there's this new thing called Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin gives people hope that they can actually make something out of their lives and have it appreciate, right? Real estate's not going to appreciate right now, and you can hardly get into it. And you have to, you know, do jump through a bunch of hoops to get qualified for a loan to get real estate and then you have to pay taxes and then there's upkeep and then there's maintenance and then all of that could go down when the market tanks, right? 0% interest. Like we're, 
What do you do with your money? Put it in the bank? Like, for what? Zero percent? You have to pay them. I have a savings account. In fucking Bank of America, unless I have $300 in my savings account, they're going to charge me, right? It's for the privilege of using my money. <laughs> like, oh, interesting. So, I don't keep much money in the bank. Screw the bank. I'm going to find a way to get my money to grow, right? So that's why we're here, people. And I want you to remember that no matter what Bitcoin does in the next three months or with all these hard forks and all this kind of... This is, this is the process, and it's messy, of early adopters uh, riding through a mainstream, you know, the, the mainstream beginning to come into the space. All right? So... That's that's my answer to the people who say Bitcoin's in a bubble, is that, yeah, well, it's a tipping point. It's not so much a bubble as a tipping point. And every little drop of any of these currencies, and people go, oh, they crashed. Well, look at Litecoin. It took a real dump here after Jamie Dimon's thing. It took a dump, but it came right back to a major level of support and has not gone below that other than this, you know, crazy crash drop here. Um, and those are opportunities to buy. One of those happens, you get in and buy, right? So, I don't know what I'm trying to say other than, I think you guys are doing a great job. And this is where you want to be. No matter what the power elites say, you want a better life. And you want to have money Here's Omise Go, the one hour chart. Again, we have serious support on Omise Go. Just hanging out, clicking along. And Monero, I think, is doing the same thing, still in the sideways channel. These are the times when it's a little bit quiet, people. You have a chance to think, make some plans. If you think these cryptos are going up, now's the time to get you some. You might want to think about your portfolio. You might think about, okay, I want 20% in Bitcoin, 20% in Litecoin, and 20% in Ethereum, right? That's 60%, and then divide the rest, and this is just a hypothetical, divide the rest among all the rest of the coins. Or, you know, I'm pretty bullish on quantum. I load it up on quantum, right? So when quantum makes a move, I may take some profits and put that into Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Litecoin, right? So you want to have someplace where you're risking and finding edges and then making sure that you take any profits from that and put it back into something that you can kind of count on, right? So a lot of the, the people that I study, they consider Bitcoin to be where they store their value, right? Even though it's volatile as fuck, you can store your value there, right? And be okay. So, but we don't know. It's not proven. And someone like, uh, I heard a debate yesterday between, oh, the guy from the Kaiser Report and the Peter Schiff, the gold bug. And, you know, Peter is like, he doesn't want to invest in something unless it's proven, right? But if you wait till Bitcoin is proven, you're shit out of luck, right? Because it's like, Essentially, my analogy, he was saying, well, gold is proven. It's been used for centuries. Okay, great. But let's say you had an opportunity to get gold when we we're when they were just switching over from, let's say, wampum or salt to gold. I, nah, I'm not going to... I'm going to wait several centuries before I see that gold is proven. No, if it's new and it's better, you got to jump on it. you got to take action and maybe you don't go all in on cryptos, right? Maybe you actually are sensible and you go, well, it's new and it may tank on me, but I'm going to take a percentage of what I do and put it here because gold is sitting doing nothing. Gold is just flat, right? And you, you can't carry it around easily and you can't really use it that easily. And there will probably be a blockchain solution for that where, you know, Gold is stored someplace, verified, and there's cameras on it all the time, so you can see your gold is there. But you have a cryptocurrency based on that, or a card, or something, you know. But 
gold is still, it's a metal, it's heavy, it's physical. And we live in a digital age. So, yeah, I think, I think ultimately, personally, <laughs> cryptos are here to stay. It's going to change the world. And you can say that's dumb. You can say it's never going to work. You can say anything you want. But the bottom line is I'm a guy who tries stuff. And if you go back to the beginning of this 90-day challenge, you'll see me literally walking open-eyed into trying some Ponzi's because I saw other people making money in them. And I wanted to try it to see what it was all about because it's only unless you have your, your own boots on the ground and you are involved and you have money on the line that you actually pay attention and learn. That's how it works for me. I'm a kinesthetic person, meaning... I have to try stuff. I can't just take someone's word for it and just go along according to that advice. And I'm not taking Jamie Dimon's word for it or Peter Schiff's word for it or the Kaiser guy. I don't know if it's Henry Kaiser or whatever his name is, but uh, the bottom line is we're in the midst of a revolution. Are you going to stand on the sidelines or are you going to toss your hat into the ring? Right? That's the question. And the thing is, be sensible, be sane, and, you know, don't bet your mortgage money. Don't put your mortgage money into this. However, if you have money you're wasting, if you have money that you're spending on, I don't know, TV and movies or going out to dinner or other things that you can actually put off, take that money and invest it in yourself. That's what I'm doing. That's the hypnosis of money. That's the big shift. Are you worth it? What is your life worth? What is your prosperity worth? Is it worth doing some work on yourself and exploring, wow, my limiting beliefs come up when Bitcoin tanks or whatever. Let's go back to Bitcoin. You know, and Bitcoin is up. And what goes up comes down. We, we see these huge volatile swings, but that's great. Because when it comes down, you can buy more, right? And at some point, we will look back on 5,800 bucks the way we're looking back on 2,400 bucks. No one thought that could happen. Back in February, I started buying Bitcoin, $20 a day. Back here, when it was 900 and change. And then it went up to 13. I'm like, oh, I missed it. No, it came back down to nine. Then it went up. This is the part that you missed right here. It will probably never go back to $1,200, right? And then it goes way up, and then it comes quite a bit back, and then it goes up, and then it comes, right? And I've said this almost every day, but look where it is now. If you can hang on during those moments of doubt, and sometimes they're, it's like a month, right? If you can hang on, you can make money fast, faster than anywhere else on the planet. And why would you not give yourself that opportunity? That's the question, right? So do something today. If you haven't done it, systematize your purchase of Bitcoin. That's If that's what you want to do, if you want to actually, if you're serious about making your money grow, that's what I've gleaned after 90 days of studying the hell out of this. Almost 90 days. I mean, I started more than 90 days ago. But what I really discovered is that all the gimmicks and gizmos, all the urgency, all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, all the fear of missing out, all that stuff is your human psychology. It's your own hypnosis. And if you choose to speak differently to your own unconscious mind and give yourself encouragement like, nope, we're in it for the long term. We're going to hang on. Oh, it went down. Going to get me some more. It's a shift on the way most people think. Most people are like, oh my God, I got to get in. Oh my God, I got to get in. I, I'm going to miss out. Right? Fear of missing out. FOMO. As Bitcoin rises. And now we have a lot of reporting. A lot of reporting on it going to 6 and going to 10 and going to 50 and going to 100. And all that could happen. And how is it like a tulip bubble? How is it like a Ponzi scheme? Well, more and more people are coming in and that fuels its growth. But it's honest. A Ponzi scheme is not. A 
A Ponzi scheme is a trick. A Ponzi scheme is someone who promises a great return and delivers it for a little while and then runs off with the money. And Bitcoin isn't promising any return. Bitcoin is merely an experiment that seems to be working. That's how I feel today. Do I still get pissed off at how long it takes to transfer stuff? Yeah. I think I transferred some money, uh, some Bitcoin yesterday, and it didn't show up for hours and hours and hours. And that annoys me and it pisses me off. And I don't see how it can sustain that kind of shitty service. But I feel the same way about YouTube. I think YouTube should be doing more to support the people who put their hard-earned time and energy into making great content that then YouTube uh, barely monetizes, right? So those are my thoughts this morning. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> my God, I can open my mouth and talk. These are the thoughts that I've been thinking all day and I saved them up for the morning cryptos and I really appreciate you guys. And if you like what I do and you want more of it, please subscribe. It really helps me a lot. I think I'm stuck at 396 viewers today. And I I kind of I kind of want to reach more people. <laughs> and I would hope that somehow that can happen, but I am also developing a long-term view and like, okay. I have a certain perspective and an insight that's not a tech insight, it's a new adopter insight. It's a person like you coming into the market going what do i do this is over, this is a lot of information what is the the minimum that i need to learn so that i can actually do well in this market and uh, i'm finding that consistent investment 20 bucks a day tax yourself 20 dollars a day 10 dollars a day whatever you can afford and begin to look around your life for where you can squeeze out some extra money right like don't sell your house don't use your mortgage money right however if you're if you're gonna blow 20 bucks on crap you might as well blow 20 bucks on something that could turn into 40 bucks right that would be Bitcoin and uh, so that's it for today if you like it subscribe give me the thumbs up I appreciate your comments and I will see you in the next one my friend we are Grind it down to the end of the 90-day challenge, and we'll see what I do next. We'll see how I change this. I'm up, I might want to start interviewing some people. I might want to start exploring something, and I'd love to hear what you guys want. What do you want more of? What do you want more of? And uh, in the meantime, you, wanna, you might want to check out my music as well. And uh, that's it for today. This has been The Morning Cryptos as part of my 90-day challenge called The Hypnosis of Money. And in general, it's the Crypto Cranker's Guide to the Bitcoin Universe, the Bitcoin Galaxy of Greed, Grooviness, and other things. Crypto. Thanks so much. Out of here. Start the music. Boom!